reading from the book of Job. One day, the sons of God came to attend on the Lord, and among them was Satan. So the Lord said to Satan, where have you been? Round the earth, he answered, roaming about. So the Lord asked him, did you notice my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a sound and honest man who fears God and shuns evil. Yes, said Satan, but Job is not God-fearing for nothing, is he? Have you not put a wall round him and his house and all his domain? You have blessed all he undertakes and his flocks throng the countryside. But stretch out your hand and lay a finger in his possessions. I warn you, he will curse you to your face. Very well, the Lord said to Satan, all he has is now in your power, but keep your hands off his person. So Satan left the presence of the Lord. On the day when Job's sons and daughters were at their meal and drinking wine at their eldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job. Your oxen, he said, were at the plough, with the donkeys grazing at their side, when the Sabaeans swept down on them and carried them off. Your servants they put to the sword, I alone escaped to tell you. He had not finished speaking when another messenger arrived. The fire of God, he said, has fallen from the heavens and burnt up all your sheep and your shepherds too. I alone escaped to tell you. He had not finished speaking when another messenger arrived. The Chaldeans, he said, three bands of them have raided your camels and made off with them. Your servants they put to the sword. I alone escaped to tell you. He had not finished speaking when another messenger arrived. Your sons and daughters, he said, were at their meals and drinking wine at their eldest brother's house, when suddenly from the wilderness a gale sprang up and it battered all four corners of the house, which fell in on the young people. They are dead. I alone escaped to tell you. Job rose and tore his gown and shaved his head. Then, falling on the ground, he worshipped and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I shall return. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken back. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this misfortune, Job committed no sin nor offered any insult to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turn your ear to me, O Lord, hear my words. Turn your ear to me, O Lord, hear my words. Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my cry. Turn your ear to my prayer. No deceit is on my lips. Turn your ear, O Lord, to me. O Lord, hear my words. From you may my judgment come forth. Your eyes discern the truth. You search my heart. You visit me by night. You test me and you find in me no wrong. Turn your ear to me, O Lord, hear my words. I am here and I call. You will hear me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Display your great love, you whose right hand saves your friends from those who rebel against them. Turn your ear to me, O Lord, hear my words. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. An argument started between the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus knew what thoughts were going through their minds, and he took a little child and set him by his side, and then said to them, Anyone who welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For the least among you all, that is the one who is great. John spoke up. 
Master, he said, we saw a man casting out devils in your name, and because he is not with us, we tried to stop him. But Jesus said to him, you must not stop him. Anyone who is not against you is for you. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today's gospel text brings us face to face with human reality, the struggle for the first among equals. This is a common phenomenon in our world today. We are still fighting for relevance at workplace and eventually in all areas of life. The disciples were arguing over who would be the greatest, but Jesus makes it clear that the greatness in the kingdom of God isn't about status, power, or recognition. Instead, it is about humility and simplicity. When Jesus placed the child beside him, he was showing that the least, the most vulnerable, the most dependent, are the ones who are greatest in God's eyes. For us today, as followers of Christ, this is a powerful reminder that we are called to humble service. Our faith invites us to imitate Christ, not by seeking honor or control, but by embracing humility and serving others with love. Whether we are in positions of leadership or simply in our family, our true calling is to uplift the weakest and most overlooked among us. When Jesus says, whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, he is teaching us that when we welcome and care for those who are small, powerless, or marginalized, we are welcoming Christ himself. This is a profound challenge for us in today's world, where it can be easy to overlook those who are on the margins, whether they be the poor, the lonely, the elderly, or those whose society tends to forget. Today, we are reminded to open our hearts to our and our communities to welcome the vulnerable. Every time we extend love and compassion to those in need, we are encountering Christ in a deeply personal way. So in, in this Eucharist, we ask Jesus to help us grow in love, humility, and compassion like his. Remembering the true greatness lies not in power or status, but in a heart that is humble, pure, and trusting like that of a child. Just as Jesus placed a little child before his disciples, may we learn to embrace childlike simplicity and dependence of God's grace, seeking not to exalt ourselves, but to serve others with love. May we follow his example, always striving to be least, to be least in our own eyes, that we may be greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. <clears throat>